Hi, I'm playing with the Element 14 community and with me is Dr. Eben Abden of Raspberry Pi and we have some quick fire questions from the community. Let's First question, why is the company and product called Raspberry Pi? Uh, very simple. Raspberry fruit named computer companies, uh, companies like Acorn and Tangerine and Apricot have probably have gotten one. Uh, we wanted to have a fruit named computer company. Pi is Python. We, we believe, we always have believed, Pi is the intellectual success of the basic. Um, it has the same lovely property that Hello World is just print Hello World. Doesn't have a lot of scaffolding around it like it might have in other languages. But unlike basic, it has a very high ceiling. So you can go to school kids and you can say, that programming language that you just wrote Hello World in, that is the same programming language that professional engineers at Google are using to build enterprise grade software. Oh, that's right. Next question, with Raspberry Pi making waves in AI, we have the AI camera, we have the AI plus head. Uh, what's the next big move in AI? Um, I think the next big move in AI is the deployment of AI into the world, actually getting value out of these capabilities. You know, it's been an amazing 10 or 15 years for theoretical pro uh, progress in AI. The confluence of enormous amounts of compute with enormous amounts of data have opened up the ability a set of tools which allow computers to do things which are which we previously would have thought were the competence, the province of the human mind, right? That's amazing. Uh, there have been some great real-world applications. Obviously, uh, our friend Demis just won himself a Nobel Prize uh, for protein folding using AI. But in general, these techniques are still mostly confined to the lab. I think the opportunity is get them out in the world, get uh, productivity gains. Your productivity gains are super important to society. Get productivity gains out of it. And I'm hoping that Raspberry Pi with our new series of AI products, the AI kit, the AI hats, the AI camera, um, and the run and running AI algorithms on Raspberry Pi itself, that we can help to contribute to that. All right, we have the RP2013 L and uh, the 2350. So, uh, and this one has a bigger version on the data sheets with 80 pins. So are there any plans for products with these bigger versions? Right. So we have two packages, as you say, we have the 60 pin package with 30 GPIOs. That's intended to be a broadly compatible replacement for the, for the previous generation RP2040 in its QFN56 package. Then we have the QFN80 uh, with 48 GPIOs. Uh, we built the Pico 2 and we will build the Pico 2W and other variants around the smaller package. I think what we're largely doing with the, um, with the big package, we're leaving that to our partners, our approved reseller partners, our design partners to innovate around. That's what we've always tried to do. We don't want to suck all the oxygen out of the room by building all the products ourselves. We like to leave some things to the ecosystem. I think the 80 pin package is a natural choice for that. Oh yeah. We have another one. What do you think about running Raspberry Pi 5 with GPUs? I think it's incredible, right? And this is all about Jeff Gehrling. So Jeff has been incredibly tenacious in trying to find ways to run big GPUs, AMD GPUs, uh, first on Raspberry Pi 4, then on Raspberry Pi 5. I think some of the upgrades that we put into the PCI Express controller in the 5 platform have finally got him over the line with the aid of a lot of hacking. I know he's still kind of wading through the wading through the morass, wading through the mire to make this stuff work. But it's been incredible to see a Raspberry Pi 5, a little Raspberry Pi 5, with a big AMD GPU sat on top of it, running PC games with Box 64 and Wine, running PC games at 4K resolution. It's remarkable. Yeah, it's remarkable. Yeah. And we have some remarkable MCUs. We have the RP2040, we have the 2350, mm. but on the Pi itself, there's an RP1. Mm. Are there any plans for non-MCU Raspberry Pi silicon? Uh, I don't think we have any plans at the moment. I think the team's very focused on the MCU roadmap. Um, I think what we are doing is we're working to make, there is a compute subsystem inside the RP1 I.O. controller. It's not the, uh, it's, it's uh, not a standard subsystem, so it's not uh, what you might think it would be, which is an RP2040 up against the pins uh, as a MUX option. Um, but it does have a lot of compute capability. Uh, in particular, it has a PIO. It has a version of our programmable IO PIO uh, subsystem. Um, we're working at the moment doing the Linux software work to expose that PIO subsystem first as a way of implementing um, a number of custom protocols which aren't implemented on the hardware on the platform, but later on trying to provide um, individual users with the ability to run their PIO programs at the other end of that PCI Express link. Okay, and your favorite project with Raspberry Pi that you've ever seen? Um, I keep coming back to the Cucumber Sorter. Um, I love this. This is now nearly a decade old project. A very, very, very early example of machine learning on Raspberry Pi. Uh, this is an engineer in Japan who's to assist his elderly parents in running their cucumber farm, trained a Raspberry Pi to recognize 23 different braids of Japanese spiny cucumber. I like it because it's an early machine learning application. I also like it, like it because it's a, a good example of what we think Raspberry Pi does really well, which is to sit and be a piece of glue logic, a piece of Lego that sits at the heart of an enthusiast project that provides a bit of compute, a 
bit of networking, uh, a bit of storage, and then a bit of ability to, act, to interact with the real world. Um, so it's a kind of a poster child for a lot of the cool stuff that we have seen people do with Raspberry Pi since we launched it with you guys back on the 29th of February 2012. Oh yeah, and if you could add any feature to a Pi, if budget and space did not matter, what would you add? Um, I, I think probably more networking options, and this is actually, you talk about budget, it is a little bit about financial budget, but it's also really about space budget. You know, what would you do if you could have a Raspberry Pi which was this big and cost a couple hundred bucks? Or maybe you might think about adding more advanced wireless to it, MIMO wireless. Uh, you might think about adding uh, faster wired networking and potentially more ports of wired networking. You might think about adding wide area networking, either cellular or some other standard to it. Um, so yeah, there are always these things, if you would imagine if we, if we took the brakes off, we could build something very fancy. I think where Raspberry Pi has always succeeded though is to very parsimoniously provide the essential elements of a computer and then push some of that functionality off into accessories that either we build ourselves, or as I say, we use this as an opportunity to have our ecosystem, our, the commercial ecosystem around Raspberry Pi, uh, create value and capture value for themselves. Yeah. Why did this credit size form factor stick? I, I think because there's a natural, we've always just about managed to squeeze all the technology that we can build in the target price range, which is the you know the thirty-five dollar price point of the classic Raspberry Pi, is now the fifty dollar base price point of the Raspberry Pi Five series. Uh, all the technology that we can fit into that kind of price structure also tends to physically fit into a credit card sized object. It becomes increasingly hard. Uh, James Adams, our uh, hardware CTO, uh, who designs every single, so it's an interesting organization where our CTO still designs yeah. the actual physical hardware. Um, usually he and I in any generation have a world where he designs the board that's a little bit too big and then I have a pointy stick and I go and stand behind him and I poke him with the pointy stick and then gradually one day it goes boop, back down into the credit card <laughs> size form factor. That may not always work, but it's always worked up. And the last question, what do you think is the next big application for Raspberry Pi? Um, I think the next big application for Raspberry Pi is, as I say, assisting in the deployment of AI into the real world, assisting in establishing that connection between the incredible work that's been done in the academic domain and in the commercial startup domain over the last 10 or 15 years, and taking that out into the world, taking that to the edge of the network taking that into the IoT environment and really building systems that create value and justify the deployment and the further development of AI.